What if I told you that the Conqueror Heavy Tank, Britain's answer to the Soviet IS-3, is kind of buffed with war thunder? That despite being one of the heaviest, slowest, and most awkward tanks of its time, it somehow performs better on paper in the game than it ever did in real-life trials. Armed with a British modified version of the M58, one of the most powerful tank guns of the Cold War, the Conqueror fires early APDS and Hess shells, designed to crush post-war armor at long range. But here's the catch. As much as the numbers might look great in game, the reality was a lot more complicated. Today we're diving deep into the L1 series gun, the rounds it fired, and just how much of its actual performance made it into the game, and what didn't. The British 120mm L, 1A1, and L1A2 were developed in direct response to the emerging Soviet heavy tanks and were closely based on the American T-123 gun, the same weapon that would arm the M103. Initially, the British considered a 114mm gun for their next-generation heavy tank. But with no suitable large-caliber gun in production, and with the Americans pushing their own 120mm design to new pressure and velocity limits, the UK followed suit. Royal Ordnance took the lead, developing the quick-firing 120mm L1A1, a rifled high-pressure gun with a 22.3-ton chamber pressure, matching the American upgrade path. Both the L1A1 and L1A2 were used on the Conqueror. Functionally, they were nearly identical. The A2 variant featured a threaded muzzle for future accessory compatibility, while the rest of the gun system, including its 7.4-meter rifled barrel, trunnion-mounted turret integration, and mid-barrel bore evacuator remained the same. In-game, the L1A2 comes with two main shells, shot L1G, an APDS round, and shell L1TK, a Hesh round. Let's talk APDS first. In War Thunder, the Sabbat round can pen pretty much anything. Its round has a 1,493 meters per second velocity and an armor penetration at zero degrees, with 447 millimeters of penetration at 1,000 meters and 125 millimeters at 60 degrees. With this high number, it's way higher than historical counterpart. Historical trials showed it could reach around 1,433 meters per second and penetrate up to 390 millimeters of flat armor or 120 millimeters at 55 degrees at a distance of 1,000 yards. To help visualize the difference, I created a graph comparing the in-game performance to estimated historical data. And I say estimated because there are only two known references online detailing actual trials for this gun. Since War Thunder uses zero degrees, 30 degrees, and 60 degrees as standard angles for armor penetration stats, every value you'll see here was reconstructed using the DeMar formula and adjusted accordingly. So while informative, this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison with real-life test data. We also worked backwards to estimate the round's muzzle velocity based on its 1,433 meters per second speed at 914 meters, resulting in an approximate point-blank velocity of 1,488 meters per second. Now, with that context in mind, the results are still pretty striking. At flat angles like zero degrees, the difference between historical and in-game values starts small, just 8% at close range, but rises to nearly 27% at 1.5 kilometers. At 30 degrees, the gap widens faster, reaching over 32% at that same distance. But the biggest leap is at 60 degrees, where the in-game round performs up to 54% better than what the reconstructed historical figures suggest. However, and this is crucial, that doesn't mean the Conqueror is overperforming in-game. Quite the opposite. The L1G's APDS is a first-generation Sabot, a transitional design between APCR HVAP and modern fin-stabilized types. It suffers from unreliable post-penetration damage, poor normalization against angled armor, and frequent shell shatter when engaging double-layered or spaced plates. So even if the stats look inflated on paper, the in-game experience often falls short, not because of low pen, but because of how the round behaves after impact. Let's also talk about the other iconic round carried by the Conqueror, Hesh. High explosive squash head is often misunderstood in game and overestimated in pop culture. People treat it like some kind of instant penetration super shell, but in reality, it was never meant to defeat tanks by punching through armor. Instead, British doctrine at the time had already shifted from destruction to disruption. In simple terms, you didn't need to blow a tank up to take it out. Breaking the track, disabling the gun, or knocking out the turret rotation was enough. That's what we now call a mobility kill, or a firepower kill. During early trials, even the 165mm Hesh round wasn't considered powerful enough to reliably kill heavily armored targets unless it hit bare armor plate. That's why British designers moved forward with something bigger, the 183mm Hesh shell. Real-life tests with this round showed it could split the Centurion's turret 
and even rip the conqueror's mantlet in half, all without needing traditional penetration. It wasn't about piercing armor. It was about delivering overwhelming internal shock. Much of this has been brilliantly documented by the YouTube channel Armored Archives, which deserves full credit for surfacing original British reports and footage from these trials. Their breakdown of the 183mm L4 is by far the most detailed and accessible on the subject. As for how Hesh performs in War Thunder, it's not wildly off, but still a bit off the mark. In-game, the Conqueror's Hesh round travels at 792 meters per second, slightly faster than the historical 762 meters per second, and delivers a consistent 152 millimeters of penetration at any angle or range. That's higher than the real-life average of around 120 millimeters. But unlike APDS, this extra penetration doesn't always translate into consistent results due to how Hesh interacts with complex armor layouts. So, while the L1 gun family brings heavy-hitting performance, the way armor slope and internal damage are modeled in-game means that what you see on paper isn't always what you get in battle. At the end of the day, it's important to remember that War Thunder isn't a perfect simulation. It's a game first, and to maintain balance across hundreds of vehicles and nations, some compromises have to be made. That's why even rounds like APDS, which are well documented in real life, end up behaving differently in game. In fact, Gaijin themselves acknowledge this in one of their updates, stating that penetration values of the APDS rounds now use a modified Jacob DeMars formula. They also introduced unique slope behavior for specific hard metal sabo types, including the 120mm shot L1G used by the Conqueror. So no, the system isn't 100% consistent, but it's designed to deliver a reasonably fair experience across all tiers and nations even if that means buffing or nerfing certain rounds compared to their historical performance. And that brings us to a final point. Just because something looks impressive on paper, like an early APDS or a monster Hesh round, doesn't mean it always performs the way we imagine. Sometimes the numbers don't tell the full story, and sometimes what we think would be cool just doesn't meet expectations. So what do you think? Is the Conqueror getting the treatment it deserves, or does the game still get it wrong? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this deep dive, don't forget to like and subscribe for more breakdowns like this one. Thanks for watching.